Tio Benjamin Netanyahu e sua esposa Sara conosco. Profima Bahia. Momento histórico para a comunidade brasileira. Gostaria de convidar Sua Excelência, o Primeiro-Ministro do Estado de Israel, Sr. Benjamin Netanyahu, para a sua saudação. Obrigado. Thank you. Sarah and I bring you greetings from Jerusalem to Rio de Janeiro and to Brazil, our brothers. This is uh, what President-elect uh, Bolsonaro said yesterday. He said, we are brothers. Not we are allies, not we have common interests, we are brothers, brothers from the heart. And today I want to speak to you, members of the Jewish communities and the governor, honorary Jew, our governor, I want to speak to you about the heart and the mind. I start with the mind, and I'll get to the heart and to the Jewish heart in a minute. But first, the mind. So a question, a very important question. Which cow produces the most milk in the world? Slide. Yeah. Is it an American cow? No. Is it a Dutch cow? No. Is it an Australian cow? No. Is it an Argentinian cow? No. Please. It's not even a Russian cow. It's about one third. This is why Mr. Putin has asked us to build farms in Russia and why we're doing it in China and why we're doing it in India. The biggest producer of cows that produce most milk is this cow, an Israeli cow. It's not because it's a Jewish cow. <laughs> it's because it's an Israeli cow. It's a computerized cow. Every moo is computerized. And the result is this. Second question. Which country produces clean water from brackish water, from wastewater, more than any other country? Slide. Yeah. It's Israel. 86% of our wastewater is recycled. And the next country is Spain, 17%. Does Brazil need water? Yes. Does Brazil need milk? Yeah, OK. Is there anything that Brazil doesn't need? It needs good health, longevity, protection from disease. It needs safe transportation. It needs security. All these things Israel has. And the reason we have it is because there's a revolution in the world, a great revolution. And it is a technological revolution which gives tremendous value to products of the mind. Products of the mind are more important than products of the earth, like oil. Here are the six largest companies, the, the f five largest companies in 2007 were countries, companies that were making oil, okay? Only one, Microsoft, was making a product of the mind. And in 10 years, 10 short years, a revolution occurred that didn't happen in history because after 10 years, not one of the energy companies is left. 
But look at how many country, companies that are producing products of the mind are there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven out of 10. Every one of those companies has not a research and development center in Israel, a major research and development center, okay? And in fact, it's probably their biggest outside their home country. There are 300 such centers of the leading companies in the world because Israel is producing products of the mind. This is the connection of big data, artificial intelligence, and connectivity. It creates new industries like cyber. Do you want your planes protected so they're not brought down by hackers? Well, Israel is the second largest cyber power in the world. We went from 10% of the cyber markets, uh, security market in 2010 to double that in three years. Number two in the world. Number two in the world. Does Brazil? After America. Okay? Cyber is needed. You, want, you have a car industry? We had a car industry. That's the car we had. <laughs> Susita, it's called. Horse. Okay? I had one. Don't, I won't tell you about it. Okay. Was, uh, we crashed, literally. Okay. But today we have a car industry because 85% of the value of the car is software. It's a computer on wheels. Now we have Waze. You use Waze? That's from Israel. And Mobileye, which was just bought for $15 billion by Intel. Revolutionary new industries. This is all in the last 10 years. 500 companies. Those who innovate seize the future. The future belongs to those who innovate. Israel is the innovation nation. It produces products of the mind. We want to cooperate with Brazil on products of the mind. In agriculture, in water, in health, in security, in defense, products of the mind. A tremendous partnership. We have decided, President Bolsonaro and I, to have here delegations for security, for defense, for agriculture, for water, and for the rest of industries. Several delegations that will be coming here in the coming months to map out the full extent of Brazil's cooperation with Israel. This is a partnership that is men meaning to happen, is meant to happen, and we're going to make it happen very fast. Mr. Bolsonaro also said this, I will move the embassy to Jerusalem. It's not a question of if, just a question of when. <laughs> President Trump said the same thing. He moved the embassy, and President Bolsonaro would move the embassy as well. He accepted my invitation to visit Israel in, uh, in uh, uh, the coming months, and he's going to do it, he said, by March, and I look forward to receiving him with the same spirit and the same brotherhood that he received me and that you are receiving us. Products of the mind describe half the story. They don't describe the heart. Yesterday, my wife Sarah and I decided to go to do a stroll on the beach, Copacabana, with your permission, Governor. And we walked on the beach. There must have been about 10,000 people on the beach where we crossed, about that. One shouted, free Palestine. That's it. But thousands received us warmly, thousands. And uh, I saw some people playing soccer, football. So I played. You know, I, I know you won't believe this, but I was a very good player when I was young. <laughs> but, you know, as in, as in chess, I quit in my prime, roughly when I was 16. But I had the opportunity to touch the people. And they had the opportunity to touch us, literally touch Sarah and me. They, they're very warm, <laughs> wonderful people. And you know, it was like, how can I say it? It's, it's like, uh, you know, they have focus groups in politics. They do focus groups. They put people in a room, and they ask them questions. This was our focus group, huge focus group. 
sandy focus group with a lot of sand. And you could see the warmth and the love and the enthusiasm of the people there, Brazilians, also, of course, evangelicals, but not only, I have to say, the citizens the, of Rio embraced us in, a, in such a direct and warm way, we could see there's a meeting of the hearts. So I welcome that especially. And of course, there is also something else, which is the special connection of the Jewish community here. I mean, I appreciate the fact that you come from all parts of Brazil. I mean, on a future visit, I would say next year in the Amazonas, but not this year. This year the Amazonas came to us, and I, I appreciate that very much. There is a, a special warmth that the Jewish community of Brazil feels for Israel. Uh, they are proud of Brazil, they love Brazil, they're proud of Israel and they love Israel. And they are a wonderful bridge between our two countries. We feel that there is a tremendous empathy here. I view Israel as the home of all Jews. All Jews should feel welcome in Israel. All of you are welcome in Israel. And I have to tell you that we have made a pledge for centuries uh, next year in Jerusalem, so next year is a few days from now. Next year in Jerusalem, I'd like to see you, all of you. But in addition to that, I would hope that you spearhead this revolution in our relationship between Brazil and Israel. There's no question. It's going to, it's going to be a fantastic brotherhood, a fantastic relationship. And you have a special role as our ambassadors, as the ambassadors of this friendship between us. I must tell you that Brazil is uh, the fifth country, fifth country, that we visited within the space of, a, of one year in Latin America. First, uh, Sarah and I went to Argentina, Colombia, Mexico. Uh, Mr. Temer asked me, would you come to Brazil? I said, sure, after the elections. And, you know, I keep my promise. But there was a fourth visit just a few weeks ago. Sarah was invited by the president of Guatemala, by the wife of the president, to come there. And she went there. I think it's the first time that the wife of a prime minister made such a visit. And she was received with full honors, helping that country after the earthquake, uh, the unfortunate earthquake that was there and was received again. In all these countries, we were received with tremendous enthusiasm. So Latin America is on our map, and you can see it because we are actually going there. It's one thing when somebody says, you know, I hate to fly, and they fly all the time, you know they're lying. But if I tell you we love Latin America, and we're coming to Latin America, you can see we're doing it because we believe in this relationship. And I cannot say, crowning achievement, because I'm the foreign minister, I have to be careful. I have to be diplomatic, but I can say that we attach enormous importance to Brazil on its own, and Brazil in the context of Latin America. Israel is coming to Latin America. Latin America is coming to Israel. It's a revolution in our diplomatic uh, effort. I will be uh, going uh, with Sarah and our delegation on Tuesday to the inauguration of uh, President Bolsonaro. Uh, I think it's a symbolic moment, it's a historic moment. I'll be meeting there other heads of state and other uh, dignitaries, including from Latin America. I think this heralds uh, a historic change, a historic pivot. I want to ask you, each of you, to take part in this adventure and to be part of history. And I invite you to bring all your friends to Jerusalem, and I will receive you there personally. But tell me before you come, because the schedule is very, very full with those who are coming. And as for the elections, I didn't realize the honorary consul was such a champion, but thank you. Thank you for that support. Thank you very, very much for all of you for coming here. Thank you. Thank you.